So I'm going to go over how I approach the abdominal and pelvic CT. So to start looking at the CT scan, I'm going to look at the images on lung windows. And you can modify lung windows with your keyboard. And uh, sometimes different people have different uh, settings. So I go to lung windows and I'm looking for pulmonary nodules. So I scroll down and then uh, sometimes I'll use the MIPS to do this and then find any nodules that I see on the thin cuts. Then I'm going to look at the heart. You're not going to see much of the heart in most of these studies, but just make sure there's no pericardial thickening or abnormal calcifications. Sometimes you see the coronaries and you can comment on if there's coronary artery disease. Then look at the distal esophagus and the GE junction and you're looking for evidence of thickening, dilatation, or any abnormal lymph nodes or vascular structures around the esophagus that could be varices. Then I also look at the pulmonary arteries and sometimes it's hard to distinguish arteries from veins but you can always go on lung windows and look for vessels that follow bronchi and those are going to be the arteries and I'll look for PE but I just do that quickly. Then I'm going to scan through the liver and look for any masses uh, or abnormal cysts. And while I'm doing that, I'll catch the gallbladder and I'll look at the gallbladder. You're also looking for ductal dilatation. And make sure to look at the portal vein. So here's the left portal vein, right portal vein, main portal vein, and the hepatic veins which drain into the IVC, which depending on the phase may be difficult to see and, and they're hard to see on, on this particular image. But sometimes you'll see them as vessels that move in this kind of a three-pronged pattern towards the IVC. Then I look at the spleen, scroll through the spleen. Fortunately, there's usually not much going on with the spleen, but pay attention whenever you're looking at organs to look at the fat surrounding the organ, and it should be nice dark fat. You shouldn't see stranding or fluid, and if you do, look extra hard at the organ parenchyma because there may be a lesion. Then I'll look at the pancreas, and if you're having trouble finding the pancreas, start at the splenic hilum, and then you'll find the tail of the pancreas, and then you follow the pancreas back up, and then scroll down, and then you can follow it to the head of the pancreas and the uncinate process. And then you also want to try to find the common bile duct. And here it's a little bit tough to see, but it's usually found in the head of the pancreas. And it's this little dot right there. And usually it'll be a little bit bigger. And oftentimes you can follow it back up to the gallbladder. Then I look at the vessels of all the organs that I've just looked at. So we already looked about the main portal vein. Then here's the splenic vein. I'm going to make sure that's patent. A lot of conditions can have splenic or portal vein thrombosis. And then the SMV. So once you find the portal and splenic confluence, keep scrolling down a little bit, and then you'll, you'll lead right into the SMV. And so here's SMV. Then I'll take a look at the celiac. So here's the celiac, and it's three branches. So you should be able to find the branch that goes to the to the spleen. A little hard to see in this case. The common hepatic artery, which you can trace up to try to find a left and a right branch, and the left gastric, which can be tough to see. Then I'll look at the adrenal glands on either side. So just go to the top of the kidney and scroll up. And then both kidneys, I look to see if they're symmetric, if they enhance symmetrically, if the size is normal, the shape is normal, make sure they're not malpositioned, and look for masses. And then look for the renal arteries and the renal veins. So you can see the vessels coming out from the hilum, and then you can follow the veins to the IVC and the arteries to the aorta. Also look at the SMA coming off the aorta, and just scroll down until you see it branch to the mesenterian bowel. Then as you look through the whole aorta, follow the whole aorta, 
down, catch the IMA, which left right there. It's going to pop off. And the bifurcation, and you're looking for atherosclerosis. So here's the bifurcation of the iliac arteries. Follow them all the way distally, and you'll see the femoral veins and the iliac veins. Then I check the urinary bladder and I look for the ureters which uh, you can either find by looking at the base of the bladder and following them or start at the renal hyla and then scroll down and you'll see them pop out. If they're nice and small like this it's probably normal and then you'll follow the ureters to the bladder. When you uh, look at the bladder you're going to make sure the walls are not thick and that there's no masses in the bladder. If you do see a mass, uh, the first study I'll do to follow up a mass or something suspicious in the bladder is an ultrasound. It's very good for characterizing things in the bladder. Then in this female patient, uh, I'll look at the uterus. So as you come up, here you're going to start to see the uterus. And here's the body of the uterus. Follow it up and then here's the left ovary and then here's the right ovary and then I'll do the GI tract. So I'll look at the stomach from the GE junction, look at the fundus and the body and the antrum, pylorus and then into the duodenum. The first thing you're going to trace is the first portion of the duodenum, then the second portion third as it crosses underneath the SMA. So a good way to find the third portion of the duodenum if you get lost is just to follow the, find the SMA and look underneath it. And then the fourth portion and then right where it makes this kind of a turn into all these other bowel loops that's the, where the ligament of trites is and that marks the fourth portion of the duodenum from the jejunum. Now for the remainder of the small bowel I don't follow the the rest of the small bowel. I just look through the mesentery. So I'll carefully scroll down and I'll look at the bowel loops as I scroll and I'm looking for bowel wall thickening, any lesions within the small bowel, um, focus on the mesentery, look for lymphadenopathy. So here's all small bowel. Go, I'm going a little faster than I would now just, just to get through it. But um, once I then go through to look at the small bowel, I'll look at the large bowel. And large bowel you may want to follow. Uh, you can also look at it when you're scanning through the mesentery. But um, sometimes it's worth following to be sure that you don't have a mass. And uh, it can take a little practice, but I'm actually following the large bowel now throughout its course. So now I'm going up to the splenic flexure, and this is all stool in the bowel, in the large bowel. And <clears throat> just make sure that you, you follow the bowel and that you don't um, skip over segments. Follow it all the way down to the end, and then you should find the appendix. And so here's the appendix. To find the appendix, look for a dot like a little dot of air. So once you see that, look around because it's probably the appendix. And then I'll look through the you also want muscles and bones. Ilium. So go to bone windows, look through the bones, and then in soft tissue windows, look through the soft tissues, and then also um, the spinal canal. Then pull up the delayed images and for the delayed images I will particularly focus on the kidneys, ureters, and the urinary bladder. Here's the ureters and the urinary bladder and you want to see contrast within the urinary bladder. And then it's often helpful to look at the other solid organs and the bowel as you scroll through the images and you can either follow the same pattern or I'll usually scroll through the delays a little bit quicker since I've already looked at everything once.